It has nothing to do with bringing life into your life, but that it's devastating. We don't have a whole lot of information about demons, but we know that when Lucifer was cast down after his rebellion in heaven, the Bible says that he took a third of the angels with him. Demons are um, angelic hosts that have followed Lucifer. We now refer to as the devil. That a third of those angels um, that rebelled against God, they followed him. And today on earth, among our lives, they are opposing the things of God and the people of God. We see that all throughout Scripture. We see that in the book of Daniel, where Daniel was praying for something. And for 21 days, it seems like his prayer just did not go through. How many of y'all have prayers that you prayed for weeks on end, and it seems like there is no answer coming from God? Well, what the Bible says later on in that Scripture is that the angel shows up to Daniel and says, Whoa, I want you to know something. I heard you praying. God has heard your prayers. But I have been fighting with the prince of Persia, is the name that they gave to that demonic spirit of idol worship that was going on. And I have been fighting against him, for he has tried to withhold God's answer into your life. That there is demonic attack against our prayers. There's demonic attack against us going forward in life. And God wants us to walk in a place of victory, not in a place of defeat. Um, number one, demons are real. Basically, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty uh, easy to see there. Um, demons are fallen angels. And according to the Bible, they are seductive. Now, I'm not talking about they wear slinky red dresses. The root word to seduce means to entice someone to a side they're not typically or already on. And there's a whole lot of things that have nothing to do with physical sexiness that are seductive. That entice, that bring you to a place that's dangerous. It's like the old, uh, it's like the old Pinocchio movie with uh, Pleasure Island. Man, that guy with the big old cigar was talking to all these boys. You need to come. You need to check this out. There's Ferris wheels and candy, and there's all these things. You're gonna love it. It's a place for boys just like you. And they get in there. Donkey ears start showing up in their life. It's not a good thing. They were enticed, brought somewhere that wasn't the right plan. They are instigators of idolatry and false religion. This invades people's life. We know this um, from firsthand experience being involved in ministry, that people will take something and they will twist it, or, they, or, 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 a, or, a, or a spirit will be saying lies into their hearts and into their life to give them where they think they have licensure to do the most whacked out sinful things and try to say that God told them they could do it because God believes in total freedom. They can cause some illnesses, and they're the source of suffering as well. Number one, demons are real. Number two, demons are at war with you. Do not think for a second that if you shut up and give up, that they'll give up as well. If you're a believer and a child of God, you put on the t-shirt that has the big bullseye on it. And I'll say that to scare you, I actually say that to just make you serious about it, all right? I have to pray over my family. We talked about angels. We talked about praying and, let, um, and, and the promises that God gave us for angels for protection that we don't see. You know, I, I, I have a firearm next to my bed. I see that protection all the time. I see that. But I've got a protection that <laughs> blows that gun out of the water, no pun intended, that I know that around my property and around my trucks... And around my children at school and my wife, when she's out and about, that there are angels better than anything I can walk into a store and purchase. That we don't have to be afraid, but it's real. And they're at war with us. Now, all throughout the Bible, um, people have been influenced by demons, and we've seen that. And I'm not talking about um, looking for a demon under every rock. Please don't get weird, all right? Or all of a sudden you're driving down the road and you run out of gas and you start rebuking the demon of out of gas. <laughs> no, that was you. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't get dumb. Know what the word says. Next, next year in 09, we're going to be doing a two-month series on spiritual warfare. We're going to go after and we're going to talk about some of the predominant spirits that have been named in the Bible... And we're going to name them, show where they come in, show how to defeat them. So don't make up demons. 
demon of mother-in-law. <laughs> there, no, nah, never mind. Okay, I know, I am. Thank you, Debbie. We need to act like there's an attack, that there is a war. And we need to be serious, and we need to be alert. And we need to operate in what God's given us. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, it's a great verse. This is a great verse. It says, be self-controlled and alert. Be self-controlled and alert. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You know what that means? That when he finds someone to devour, he'll go for it. But there will be folks that he'll have to pass by who are alert and disciplined. They're making sure things are right. They're making sure there's not open opportunity for demonic trafficking. They're alert. They're self-controlled. You just live willy-nilly, and you just kind of like anything goes and stuff like that, and you kick wide the door. You kick open the door for demonic trafficking. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him and stand firm in the faith. Resist him. You can resist these attacks. Number one, demons are real. Number two, um, demons uh, are at war with you. Number three, demons scheme to lure you away from God. That's their worst, worst fear, is that you become a functioning and flourishing child of God. Some of y'all got some stories. You got some amazing testimonies of ways that you used to live and the ways that you used to be and that God has supernaturally brought you to him and changed your heart, changed your life, broken you free from addictions, broken you free from bondages. And today you are a shining example of what God can do in a life. The enemy hates that. And he wants to lure you away from God. So it matters the people that you hang out with. Somebody say amen. amen. It matters. It matters who's influencing your life. It matters. You can't just think, now I'm saved, I bought my fire insurance, I won't hit hell, I'll hit heaven, and I'm just going to live life the way that it was. Wrong. You've missed the point. You've missed the point. God wants to change your heart and change your life and draw you closer to him and give you heaven. Um, demons scheme to lure you away from God. So um, here's one thing I wrote in my notes. Deception isn't deception if you know it's happening to you, right? Right? Nobody says, oh, I think I might be being deceived, or am I right, or am I wrong, or am I deceived? Usually someone else has to tell you you're deceived, amen? Usually someone else has to say, hey, whoa, 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 you didn't used to talk like that, you didn't used to think like that, that didn't used to be you. What's going on in your life? Godly people, people who love you, people who have your best interest at heart confront you about something. They do your little intervention on something. You don't know you're deceived when you're deceived. And the enemy wants to lure you away from things. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. And so a lot of people say, well, that verse is obviously about people who wear black cloaks and black lipstick all the time. And I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's people just like you and me. Because it's not so, we'd kind of call it what it is if we all of a sudden, you know, became goth. And some of you who are in your 50s, you know, started looking like you dyed your hair and stuff. Like that. We'd, you, you know that's not pretty normal. But that's not where deception comes in. Deception comes into the day, the normal, the week-to-week the -week life. That's where deception comes in and where people start thinking, I don't need a message of grace. I need a message of law. It's deception. And you don't have to look weird for it to be deception. You don't have to stand in the middle of a pentagram of candles for it to be deception. You actually need to have life kind of going on normal the way it was. But rejecting truth that you once knew to be truth. Marriages have been broken up because of that. That one seed of doubt. I just don't know if I love, you know, Bill anymore. I'm just not positive that I'm in love anymore. Well, well wait a second. Whoa, hold on. Your vow said till death do you part.